What's up all you car maniacs out there? This is Caracabo, the Forger of Pain. And this is the second press conference. I just watched Bethesda and let me tell you something. EA, that's how you do a press conference. They started the press conference with Quake. And I don't know if you guys know, but I'm an old school guy and I've been gaming since I was four and I play a hell of a lot of Quake 2. And uh, well, yeah, after Quake 2, that I kind of got kind of bored. But you know something? Uh, the name of the game is Quake Champions. The only thing that I'm kind of worried is that this thing that is trending nowadays, that everything is online, that you have to be online 24 seven. Like, I'm not a fan, not a fan because I'm gonna get into a little rant here, but the thing that worries me is that, I mean, Quake is always being known for, you know, full death match, and I wouldn't mind a campaign, but like I said, let's say like someday, if, you know, I'm in the, I don't know, whatever, in the jungle or something, and I don't have internet, I can't play that. So, I mean, I would appreciate guys if the game uh, doesn't have like that DRM thing where you have to always have to be online. You can play like, I don't know, old school, four screen split, uh, you know, that match, whatever. They said we're getting more info on Quake on August on the QuakeCon. So yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Now, Doom. Doom is getting a new DLC with, I think, uh, three maps and uh, also like, uh, that was, was what, like the Doom map thingy where you can customize. Uh, I'm not too sure, but, but well, don't take my word for it because, you know, they talked a lot and I'm not, I'm not complaining and they gave us a lot of information. So I took notes and I did everything I could. The other thing that's trending a lot is like, guess what? We have a card game. And Elder, I think it's Elder Scrolls Legends. And it's, you know, like Smite and stuff like that. Imagine like Yu-Gi-Oh, but on your computer screen. Exodia, obliterate! One of my favorite Bethesda franchises, it's Elder Scrolls. And there was a rumor that was flying by it was somewhere in the air. It was, you know, uh, Elder Scrolls Six, and uh, but we, we didn't. Sadly, we didn't get that. But still, we got good news. We got a Skyrim Remastered Definitive Edition version. And I know what you're thinking. Like, really, another remaster? But they showed just images between the PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, uh, and the PlayStation Four and Xbox One and it looks amazing, like, um, I gotta admit, the difference is abysmal. Um, the forest, the lighting, the shadows, the water, everything looks great, like the magic. But then that's not even like the, like the actual awesome, coolish news. No, guess what? You can use mods, PC mods on consoles. And finally, I'm gonna be able to have my Macho Man Dragon, ooh yeah! Just imagine that, Dad. And that's like the tip of the iceberg. So finally we're gonna have mods on consoles. Yeah! Just when I thought we were out of Fallout 4 content, and I'm gonna just saying this like that game, oh my God, I, I did everything in Fallout. No, you can play that game forever. But we got a new update. Now you can create your own vault. And you know, there's new assets and uh, a lot of creation tools that, oh God, man. And I don't, I'm not like the biggest Fallout creator, but really, I, you could spend hours just creating. So yes, now you can do your vault. Not only you have settlements, now you can do all your whole vault thingy. And I don't know if you could do like crazy experiments like vault Tech, but hey, that would be cool. And, you know, speaking of Fallout, um, I started to play Fallout Shelter, you know, before Fallout 4 because that came first. And I stopped playing it, uh, well, just because reasons. 
But if you're still playing that game, that's, you know, kind of addictive, by the way, uh, you can still do it because they're going to have, like, new updates. And, uh, well, I'm not going to go into much detail there because, like I said, I'm not into Fallout Shelter. I might get get to it again, but, nah, no, not sure for now. Virtual reality reminds me of VR Troopers. Yes, I am that old. And thumbs up if you got that reference. Um, I'm not too excited about VR, but Bethesda said something that I'm like, you know, that could actually work. They're go we're going to have uh, Doom, you know, the, the latest Doom, duh, and uh, Fallout 4 for the virtual reality for the VR, I know. And uh, yes, now that is a perfect game to immerse you, you know, this that's the way to, you know, just, just be like there, like face to face and interact. And I, I just can't imagine like having a death claw right here and, you know, doing the battle. <laughs> Bethesda announced a new IP, it's called Prey. Now, I'm not sure if it's just me, but that sounds familiar. Like, I don't remember if they were trying to do this game that was named Prey and it got canceled. The thing is that um, this game is like a psychological thriller. Uh, they, it wasn't like a lot of things um, that was mentioned about it. Not many details. We saw a cinematic trailer, but it got my attention. This guy, like he got up in the morning, like, hey dude, it's time to get up, you know, up and at him. And then he went to the mirror, he did like this, and his eye was kind of reddish, not like this beautiful red color but it was kind of reddish so the next day you know cuts to black again John Doe get up time to work and the guy was like more screwed up and he went to the mirror like and then you saw like um, the guy they were experimenting with him and the game the, the cinematic trailer had a theme of like a circular thing moving like that it was moving like that and you saw like it had to do something with the eye. I mean, isn't that obvious? Like it got in there and I don't know if it did something to its brain. It was like this futuristic uh, thing. Uh, you saw like the buildings and a guy has like this suit. It kind of reminded me, I mean, the suit of the guy of Dead Space. It was kind of a little bit uh, like Isaac. What's up Isaac? So yes, uh, you no, know, that was like the only sneak peek we saw in that press conference because everything like I said everything was pretty damn detailed and I'm not complaining this was the press conference you thought it was interesting here it got more Bethesda decided to do something that is not easy they have balls plentiful balls of steel full of testosterone because they could have finished the press conference with a game that everybody knows but no they decided you know what Screw you, Dishonored 2. You're gonna like it. Not whether you like it or not. No, you're gonna like it. And uh, let me tell you something. Dishonored, the first one, was a game that it was a great game, but sadly it flew kind of under the radar and not many people found about it. I was even talking to a friend of mine. We were watching the press conference. He was like, Dishonored 2, yeah, like that, that's kind of cool. That's kind of neat, but you know, I'm not interested. So, and they started with Dishonored 2. The settings are in a kind of steampunkish theme. And uh, okay, first of all, I don't know if you know, but steampunk is because imagine there's no electricity and they make machines and they use steam. But here in Dishonored 2, everything works with the wind. So let's coin a term for that. Let's say like wind punk, if you will. Dishonored 2 is the love child of a threesome, so yeah, that's kind of sick, of Bioshock Infinite and Assassin's Creed and Mirror's Edge. Everything is there, like the stealth kills of Assassin's Creed, the parkour of Mirror's Edge, and the vigors of Bioshock Infinite. And as you see, like the powers, not exactly that, but when you see it, you know what I mean, and you know what I'm talking about. Let's go with the story. In Dishonored 1 and spoilers by the way and I don't think it's spoilers because when you start playing the game it's the first thing you see on Dishonored 1 you play as Corbo the bodyguard of the Empress and the Empress she gets whacked she gets killed 
and they kidnap her daughter. Oh, hi. Her daughter, Emily. And uh, so, yeah, 15 years later, we get to Dishonored 2. And you play as Emily, which is now the Empress, and somehow she kicks ass, and she knows how to fight and everything, and you use her. The other one that you could use is Corbo, but we only saw, like, Emily's gameplay. And she has a lot of powers. Like, um, there was a time where she transformed, like, into a shadow, and it remind me a little bit of the darkness, and that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. Now, there was another thing, another mechanic of the game that was freaking awesome. Um, Emily was in this, like, um, wrecked up mansion, and uh, she had, like, something on her left hand, and it wasn't a pit boy. But you could see, like, how the mansion looked in the past before it was destroyed. And you could switch uh, back in time, like you could be like physically uh, in the past and then you could be in the future and then you could go in the past and you could kill like a bodyguard or a policeman, whatever. And then she would go into hiding in the future. I know it sounds complicated, but it's not. And if you kill somebody in the past, it affects the future. So man, it was mind blowing. And then, the, remember that friend that I was telling you about that wasn't interested in Dishonored? He was like, damn, son, now I have to play Dishonored 1. And here's a good segue. They announced the pre-orders for the Collector's Edition. And you know I'm into collecting and hoarding. Collector's Edition of Dishonored 2 will bring you a replica mask of Corbo. And also, if you haven't played I was gonna say Assassin's Creed. If you haven't played Dishonored 1, this is the best chance. Um, I think they said it's limited, uh, and probably, they even said it themselves that it will probably be like Fallout 4 last year with the Pip-Boy edition. And if you, wanna, you don't wanna deal with freaking scalpers, go pre-order it now and you'll get Dishonored 1, the definitive edition, and the collector's edition of Dishonored 2. And the game is gonna be available on November 11th of this year. And that was it. And the I have no complaints. I love the press conference. I was mind blown. I can't wait. I actually, I like Dishonored 1. Like I mentioned time for time and time again, I like Dishonored 1. But I wasn't, exp I wasn't like, oh my God, Dishonored 2. I wasn't that excited. But when I saw that, like the most exciting thing for me, it's, Dishonored 2 and to play Fallout 4 with the VR thingy. And well, that those were my impressions of the Bethesda press conference. I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Tell me what are you hyped about? Uh, what are the things were you expecting? Because I was expecting probably Elder Scrolls 6. But you know, I digress as always. Guys, this is Katakamo Gaming from Los Angeles, California, saying like or die.